like yesterday's notes, all objects have a gravitational field. It's another way of thinking about the gravitational force, in a sense. For example here, a gravitational field is the three-dimensional space that surrounds an object in which the force of gravity is present. In which the force of gravity is present. Now, so here's a little picture, like a wide-angle shot of the Earth. These blue vectors represent the gravitational field. You obviously wouldn't see those in real space, but it represents gravity sucking, sucking things in towards the Earth. And I could draw a lot more blue arrows, quote-unquote, vector arrows. I could draw infinitely many of them because the gravitational field of the Earth fills the three-dimensional space that surrounds the Earth. Or any object. I could draw the same diagram for any object. A baseball, a person, a pen, a pencil, a grain of sand would have a similar diagram. The gravitational field pulls inward, or is the space that surrounds that object. Once again, you have to add the three-dimensionality to, to this diagram because we can't draw three-dimensionally on this piece of paper. So using the theater of the mind, you envision that this gravitational field fills all of space surrounding the Earth. So the arrows point in the direction of the force, that the force would be acting on an object that came near the Earth. The closer spacing, nearer the Earth, indicates that the field is stronger when you're near the Earth. And that these lines, if you don't draw any more lines, they spread out, they get farther apart just because of the geometry as you get farther from the Earth. So the, f the field is weaker the further you are from the Earth. And therefore, the force that you feel if you're a second object would be weaker according to the inverse square law that we learned yesterday. Once again, the field is also three-dimensional. You have to put that part in yourself by envisioning that. The most common application will be for planets like this because they're the ones that have appreciably uh, strong gravitational fields that can affect smaller masses or each other. So calculating the gravitational field strength. The equation for calculating gravitational field strength is little g, and you've seen that before equals big G times the mass of the planet you're dealing with here. Here we're talking about only one object and the field that surrounds that particular one object, not the force between two different objects. They're related because this equation can be derived from Newton's law of universal gravity by taking his law from the previous day's notes, dividing both sides by the little mass, and you get this result. We don't need to worry about that. In this class here, we're just going to look at this field and calculate this field and see how it acts and... Um, the strength of this field. So little g stands for the gravitational field strength. It's kind of a, a fancy way of talking about the acceleration due to gravity for a particular planet. We've done this all year on the, on the surface of the Earth. Little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. It's an acceleration. But calling it the gravitational field strength is a more generic way of speaking or talking about this particular concept. Capital G still is what it was before. It will never change. In these units, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared that will be given to you on any test or homework. M sub 1 is the mass of the planet or object we're talking about here in kilograms. Make sure you're in standard units once again. And D is the distance from the center of gravity, just like it was yesterday. When you're calculating force, it's the center of gravity of object number 1 to the center of gravity of object number 2. Here we just have one object. We'll start with an example, like for example, of the Earth. Calculate little g on the surface of the Earth. Well, some of you who are thinking about this already know what the answer should be. It should be, think about it for a second, 9.81 meters per second squared. So this might be overkill in this case, but we just want to show you the consistency of this law. And you can check it with your calculator, but basically all we will be doing here is plugging into the equation little g equals capital G m sub 1 over d squared. So typically here, you apply this to the surface of a planet because you can't, it does, this doesn't work if you dig a hole into the planet. This only works on the surface of the planet or as you go higher above the planet into the atmosphere. As we're showing here, we're on the surface of the planet, planet Earth in this case. Capital G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. That's 6.67, if you can see that too well. Times the mass of the Earth, in this case, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. We're good with kilograms. Divided by your distance from 
the surface of the Earth at the center, so I can illustrate that on the diagram with a red, red radius. If you're on the surface of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, which is your distance to the center of the Earth, is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Meters are good. And don't forget to square that. Common mistake. Anyway, if you pause the video right now, try the calculation yourself, see if you get my result. My result is 9.83 meters per second squared, which is very consistent with the 9.81 we typically get. I'll use blue. That's our gravitational field strength, or in other words, the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. Alternate units would be newtons per kilogram. We don't need to worry about that in this class, but let's just go with our standard acceleration units, meters per second squared, because we're more familiar with that. Let's do another example. Here we have the Earth again. However, in this case, we want to calculate g, the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength, at some position that's not on the surface of the Earth. It's out here somewhere. I'll highlight that with a red dot. You're somewhere above the atmosphere, high above the Earth where satellites orbit, which we'll be talking about tomorrow, how, how satellites maintain their orbits around a planet. But in this case now, the distance from the center of the Earth to where the planet is, or, or the, the satellite is, is more than the radius of the Earth. But we will be, once again, using the equation g, little g, equals big G times the mass of Earth, in this case, over the distance squared. Now, we have to do a little bit more work here in preparation. That's one option, a, a good option. D is the distance from the center of the Earth to where the satellite is, but it's going to be the sum of the radius of the Earth, and I'll do, you can do it on your calculator. I'll do it longhand down here in non-scientific notation. It's 6,370,000 meters. That's this number up here, the radius of the Earth, in non scientific notation because 6.37 times 10 to the 6 move the decimal over six places that's 6,370,000 and now the altitude of this particular satellite its distance from the surface of the earth that's what altitude means it means from the surface to where you're at not from the center but from the surface of the earth is 850 kilometers so I have to add that to the radius of the earth in other words see if I can highlight this in black this right here is the radius of the Earth, and now I have this part here, this little segment from the surface of the Earth to where the satellite is at, is the altitude, let me call that A, which is 850,000 kilometers, or 850,000 meters. I have to add that number to the 6 million. Well, in non-scientific notation, that's 850,000 meters, because kilo is three more zeros. Add these two numbers. I'll do it without the calculator. Don't be too impressed. You should all be able to do this, as a matter of fact. 7,220,000 meters is my distance to where this particular uh, spot is. There's no satellite there right now, but if there were a satellite there, we'll talk about that tomorrow again. But this is, this is a position. This is, this is a spot in space where we can calculate the value of G, the gravitational field strength, or what your acceleration would be if you would drop something from that spot. And it's not going to be 9.81 because when you get off the surface of the Earth, your acceleration straight back down towards the Earth is not going to be 9.81. It's only 9.81 meters per second squared when you're at the surface of the Earth. Anyway, here we have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. That will always be given. Times the mass of the Earth. Still 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Always check in the units. Divided by our distance, which we just figured out. You can write it out longhand, or you can put it back into scientific notation now. 7.22 times 10 to the 6th. That quantity has to be squared. Once again, I'll remind you, don't forget to square that. Once again, you can pause if you would like. See if you can get my answer. It's not 9.81. At that particular position, it's going to be less than 9.81. It's always going to be, for Earth, it's always... 9.81 at the surface, and then less than that anywhere else above the surface, it comes out to be 
five meters per second squared. Let me also remind you, now this went down a little bit because you didn't really go that far off the surface, but this is another inverse square law, which means if you would have doubled the distance, in other words, if you would have gone the 6 million meters plus another 6 million meters, 12 million meters, uh, 6 million meters altitude plus the 6 million meters of radius, then g would be one-fourth because if you double the distance, then you have an inverse square relationship you would have one-fourth the value for g. Let me just write that down once here. If I would have had uh, my 6,370,000 meters radius plus an altitude of 6,370,000 meters of height off the surface, basically that's 12,740,000, 12,740,000 uh, meters would be my distance. If I redid the calculation, I don't really need to do that I'm going to do this quickly in this case, because if I'm double the distance, 12 million instead of 6 million meters from the center of the Earth, my value for G will be one-fourth the surface value. Now, if I round off a little bit here, surface value for G, surface, S-U-R-F-A-C-E, G at the surface, I'm rounding off, is 10 meters per second squared. If you double that and go at um, G, at double the distance, okay, 4, 000, that's like 4,000 miles altitude. Uh, um, so I'm just going to say G double, D-O-U-B-L-E, double the distance. That's our 4,000 meters altitude here at the bottom, 6 million meter altitude. Then it would be one-fourth of the 10 would be 2.5 meters per second squared. That's an example of the inverse nature of this relationship as you double the distance, the gravitational field strength or the acceleration goes down by a factor of 4. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 meters per second squared. One more example. Here we have a mystery planet. It's not Saturn. It looks a little bit like Saturn. I kind of like the yellow color here. Well, actually, it's two planets here, uh, or a planet and its moon. That's probably not the case. It's just kind of some couple, a random planet. Let's just look at the, the pink, or not the pink, the yellow planet here. We're going to use the same equation again. Gravitational field strength equals capital G M1 over D squared. We're trying to find the mass of this planet, and this is what's done sometimes to figure out the mass of planets, because you obviously are not putting planets on scales to figure out their mass. You have to, you have to use some kind of mathematical process to find the mass of planets. But something like this could possibly be done. If you know the gravitational field strength on a certain planet, is 2.5 g. Now up here in the upper right, in this context, little g in that context does not mean grams. It means the g value on the surface of the Earth when you see it in a sentence like that. So this means 2.5 times 9.8 because 9.8 is 1 g, the little g there. And if you do the math there, 2.5 times the 9.8 is 24.5 meters per second squared. So, it's, you know, it's almost 25. That's the G value at the surface for this particular planet. So I have 24.5 is my G value, my little g, equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of this planet, which I don't know in this case. It's a mystery planet. It's a yellow Saturn. It's not Saturn. But m sub 1 is the mass of this particular planet divided by the distance squared. Now watch out. This it, originally, or in your notes, the di it says the diameter, the diameter of the planet. Well, I want to be on the surface of this planet, which means I want the radius of that planet. And in your notes, it should say 8.8. .8. The diameter is 8.8. .8. So if the diameter is 8.8, .8, then the radius of this planet, you divide by 2, is 4.4 times 10 to the seventh meters. That's how far you are from the center of the planet if you're on the surface of this planet. So that's my distance here, 4.4 times 10, times 10 to the seventh meters, double check, make sure it's meters, and squared. All right, to solve this using algebra, I'll do one of the steps, but you can actually skip this step if you are really good with your calculator. 
Basically, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the 4.4 times 10 to the 7th squared. You could square it first, but I'll do that later. And when you do that, you end up with 24.5 times the 4.4 times 10 to the 7th. That quantity will be squared equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th m sub 1. Now I will do this on my calculator. On the left-hand side, I'll take the 4.4 times 10 to the 7th squared, multiply it by the 24.5, and then I'll take all of that and divide by the 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And if, when all is said and done here, and you might want to pause this again and see if you get this answer, I ended up with 7.0 times 10 to the 26th kilograms for the mass of this particular planet. All right, gravitational field strength. It's an inverse square relationship. G equals, little g equals, capital G, m sub 1 over d squared.